Welcome. So this time we're going to look at how to calculate wave equations. So if you have an equilibrium where the, the fluid is stationary and then you want to try and work out what happens when you have a small disturbance. So if you have a, a surface of a, a lake and you throw a stone into it, what happens to the surface of the water? How do the, how do the ripples that you produce move through the water? Um, and of course sound in the air, so when I'm talking now, pressure waves are travelling through the air how do the wa those waves travel, and how fast do they travel? Um, and different kinds of waves have different behaviour. We'll see some, some ordinary waves like sound waves and some quite strange waves in, in this course. Um, so we'll just start by looking at a, a few concepts related to this. So what we want to do is take something which has a, a, an equilibrium solution. Um, and if you're not sure what that is, see, it, see the previous videos. Um, this is a case where all the forces are in, are in balance. And then we want to make a small change to that and so this will be a concept that comes up many, many times where we have a, a large parameter and we want to see what happens when we, when we make a small change. And so this allows us to simplify the equations um, if we can assume we have a small parameter. And in this case, what we're going to do is take a nonlinear equation and turn it into a linear equation. And this is what we're labeled here, linear, linearization. And this makes our life much easier because now we can find wave equations using simple linear ordering differential equations rather than a nonlinear problem. And this allows us to find the dispersion relations, which tell us what frequency of the waves are um, as a function of wave number. Um, and this allows us in turn to get the, the phase velocity and the, the group velocity of the waves, for example. So this is a quick reminder. So we have a, let's say a, a surface of the water, some kind of equilibrium solution. We have kind of a bath of water here. And then and make some small disturbance in one location. And those that will produce waves. And these waves will travel will travel out. That's what we're gonna look at. So we're gonna look at a case where we have a, a large background and then small ripples on top of it. And what this allows us to do is to essentially separate the quantities we're evolving. So we have mass density rho, velocity u of the fluid, um, and pressure p. And we're going to split these into two components. So there's going to be a, a large background component. So this is the equilibrium part, and then plus a small, a small delta rho. So delta rho is a small part compared to, to this rho mod. And the same for for u. So u is is composed of u naught plus a, a small perturbation, and same for p. So it's p naught plus delta p. So we split up our, um, our evolving variables into, into two pieces. Um, and then everywhere in the equations where we have, um, have these multiplied together, so two small numbers multiplied together gives us an even smaller number, um, that, will end up, that will be negligible. And so we can remove them from the equations. Um, and that will leave us with a, a linear set of equations. Um, so we substitute these, these expansions into, into our equations. Um, and so if we have the, the Density equation, for example, so one is a density. So it's d rho by dt plus divergence of rho u is equal to zero. And so here we just essentially take these these quantities here and we substitute them into this equation. Now, one thing is that these are uh, because they're equilibrium, they are not changing in time. So, so these are equilibrium values. So d by dt of these quantities is zero. And so every time we have a, a d by dt of say density, only the perturbed part is left over. So d this becomes d delta rho by dt. And then now we have two components here. So we have a divergence of, now we can expand this out um, I'll just write this out in full here for now. So we have a rho naught plus delta rho. Once you've seen it a few times, you can um, you can kind of skip past a few steps, but it's good to write it out in full just to start with. Um, so here we have essentially four terms this would expand out into. Um, some of them, we'll see, involve only equilibrium. So we have a d delta rho by dt. Now we have, so we have things involving only equilibrium components, so rho naughts, 
but not units. Um, we have components which involve only a single delta, so either a delta rho times u naught or a rho naught times delta u. So we have a delta rho times u naught plus a delta u times rho naught. Um, and we have components which is, is the two perturbed quantities multiplied together. Delta rho, delta u. Now, this part which involves only equilibrium quantities, um, this must be equal to zero because in, in equilibrium, this is d by dt is zero, and so divergence of rho naught u naught in equilibrium must be zero. And so this, this component, any components involving only equilibrium, equilibrium quantities must go to zero. Uh, so this is equilibrium, equilibrium. Um, these components are linear in a perturbed quantity. So these are all a, an equilibrium quantity times a perturbed quantity. And so these we're going to keep. Now these are nonlinear components. So we have a, a perturbed quantity times a perturbed quantity. We're assuming that these are, are each very small. And so this quantity here is much smaller than either of these two components. And so this we can just set to zero. This is a nonlinear non part. And we're assuming that it's small for now. Okay, and this allows us to simplify this, this equation. So we have, uh, now I have just two, two things to keep. So we have a, uh, let's write this out again, d dt. Um, now we could write this out in various different ways, but what we'll do is just write this out here. So delta rho times u naught. Uh, plus delta u times rho. Okay, so that's the first linearized equation. Then we can do the same tricks for the for the other equations. So we can do uh, to like the momentum equation. Uh, this equation is a bit bit longer, so I'll I'll skip past a few steps that I did explicitly in in that equation. But we have uh, du by dt. u dot grad u, um, and this is either 1 over rho grad p, um, or you put the, the rho over here. So I'll just put the rho over, over that side. So it's grad, it's grad p. Uh, you can do either way, so you can expand out with the 1 over rho over, over this side. Um, you'll get essentially the same answer. Um, and now we just, again, substitute everything into here. Um, again, all quantities involving um, equilibrium quantities go to, go to zero, um, and all quantities involving um, Nonlinear terms go to zero as well. So this first bit, so we have a, a rho naught times perturbed quantities in here. So we have a, a rho naught. Um, and then this, of course, will just give us a perturbed quantity, so d delta, delta u. d delta u by dt. Um, and then in here we need just one perturbed quantity. And so we have um, delta u, we see times the delta u dot grad u naught. And we'll have also a u naught dot grad delta u. So this is just from expanding this out as u naught plus delta u and this u naught plus delta u. And so you expand those out and you'll get again quantities involving only u naughts, quantities involving one perturbed quantity, um, and the non-linear terms. Um, and then on this side, we will have, again, perturbed quantity and a, a equilibrium quantity here. So here you just have a minus grad delta p on this side. Um, here we can also have um, on the side, another component. Uh, so we have, uh, in principle, a delta rho. And then, because we already have a perturbed quantity here, we just have equilibrium quantities in, in here. Uh, so here we'd have, uh, again, d by dt of equilibrium is, is zero. So here we just have u naught. Dot grad u naught. 
Okay, so now every term in this equation um, has one perturbed quantity um, and the rest are all equilibrium quantities. Okay, so that's the second, second equation. Uh, the third one is very similar to the first, so the third is the pressure equation or energy equation. Uh, so we have T P by T. That's the affection term, and that's, uh, that's gamma. So P divisions of U. Uh, well, gamma is five thirds in. in the simple ideal gas case. Uh, so here again, exactly the same process. So um, we have a d delta p by dt. Um, now again, we have two terms here. So we have a, a u naught dot grad delta p uh, plus a delta u dot grad p naught. And here again, we have two two quantities here which are evolving. So this is minus gamma, uh, so p naught delta u, um, and then we have a minus gamma delta p divisions of u naught. So you can see it's, it's just splitting up each term which multiplied together into two into two terms. Um, I'm just doing that for every term in the equation. Okay. So that gives us a, the third equation. So now we have the three equations um, for, for all this equation. And they're all linear. So these are all so now three, uh, three linear equations. Um, and they all describe the perturbations. So it's actually uh, perturbations. So they describe how the perturbations evolve in, in time. And so we can start from a simple example. Um, which is just sound waves. So we can look at what, what happens in a, in a stationary fluid when you have small pre uh, pressure disturbances. So for example. So making the initial fluid stationary um, has lots of advantages. A lot of these terms involve involve u naughts. Um, so you have a u naught here that will disappear. Uh, this u naught at the end that's, that will disappear. Um, and so we imagine we have a, a uniform, uniform stationary gas, or stationary fluid. And so if it's if it's uniform, um, then the gradient of equilibrium quantities are, are zero. Um, so gradient of rho naught, gradient of p naught, are all zero. And if it's stationary, then the equilibrium flow is also zero. And that simplifies the equations considerably. So all that's left is in the, the density equation, we have minus rho naught, delta u. And in the momentum equation, We just have a, a few small full bits here, so the only bit left over is uh, is this one, delta p, delta p. So every other term in this momentum equation went to zero. Um, so if we look in here, just show you because it looked pretty horrendous at the beginning. Um, you can see this term is u naught, u naught goes to zero, these goes to zero. Um, and so the only term left is, is basically this this bit here and the pressure put up pressure gradient here. And so all these equations simplify. And the same with the pressure equation. So you have uh, d delta p by dt. And it just ends up being a minus gamma. Delta u. Okay, and this is just these terms here are just the compression. So you see it's divergence of a flow. So as the, the gas is compressed or squashed or, or expanded, um, the pressure and the, and the density change. And of course, the changes in, in the fluid driven by changes in, in pressure. So what we can do is we can differentiate um, this equation. So this momentum equation, again, ends up being, okay, is one way of 
uh, solving this. Essentially, we know what the, the time derivatives of these are, um, and we have here an equation involving a delta p. So if we differentiate this in time, we'll get a d delta p by dt, and we can substitute in this equation here. So we have, so we differentiate this in time. So we have a second derivative of, of u in time, um, and we have a minus one over rho naught, so rho naught's not changing. Um, the dy dt goes through the, the spatial derivatives, so we have a d dot p by dt. And then we can take this and use this expression, so we just substitute this expression into there. And this is going to give us uh, that d2 delta u by dt squared um, is, here we have a, a minus rho naught uh, times the gradient of this d delta rho by dt, which is this. And so we have a, a, another minus sign, which cancels this one. Um, and then here we have that's gamma p naught, which would be p naught. Um, and then divergence of delta u. Uh, now, gamma and p naught are just constants. They come out the front here. Um, so which is gamma p naught over rho naught. And now we have an equation which is second derivative of, of u in time involves constants times the second derivative in space. And this is, this is a wave equation. And the, and the constant in front here, this is the square of the sound speed. So this is cs squared, where cs is the sound speed. Okay, so that's how to get from, from the nonlinear equations to linearize them, and then to group together the, the linear equations to find a single expression um, involving, in this case, delta u on, on both sides and that we can then solve to, to find the dispersion relations.